getting advanced screening to Predator. Um, there's going to be a NECA toy giveaway and a special Funko Pop giveaway. We're going to do a huge, uh, I'm, I'm doing it with two major film critics. We're going to have a whole breakdown with spoilers and everything later. So keep watching. Okay, bye. Hey guys, welcome back to Economics and Comics. So we went and saw the Predator movie and it, I liked it. But before we get started, uh, this is Joel and, and this Mike. is Mike yep. Massey. They're the Massey brothers. Collectively the Massey twins. The yeah. Massey twins and they are film critics. Um, I'll let you, I'll let them say a little bit about themselves in a second, but I wanted to say that we're going to do a giveaway. And so, well, first of all, you can see them down here below at gonewiththetwins.com and part of the giveaway is the Predator, Fugitive Predator from NECA Toys. It's really cool. I don't know if you can see it or not. And this Funko Pop exclusive, the alien when he's uh, invisible and he's got like green blood on him. So I'll tell you more about the giveaway later, but let's begin. So you guys want to well, where, where are the giveaways for your guest uh, oh, yeah. critics? Oh, well, yeah, you guys got coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you got coffee. So. Yeah, so we literally just got out of this uh, this advanced screening, um, you know, about 20 minutes ago. And so, uh, yeah, we kind of want to just shoot or, shoot shoot the breeze here and see, uh, yeah, give see the thoughts. Up. Maybe uh, we start with kind of giving a synopsis of the film. Yeah, and, and no spoilers. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not trying not to do, do spoilers, it. yeah. So now anything in the trailer is going to be fair game? Yeah. So we'll assume you've seen the full uncut trailer. Yeah, the, uh, if the not, pause, trailer. go watch it, come back. Yeah, come back. Or, well, you'll have to start the video over, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to hear you guys talk about it because on their site, um, it's very detailed. Their writing is incredible. We're, we're also pretty tough critics, so. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're tough, but they are Predator fans, so. Yeah. Um, well, maybe that, that makes might us not even be tougher. good. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you want to give a brief synopsis and just kind of set it up? Uh, no, yeah, I mean. Or watch, watch the trailer and there's your synopsis? No, no, go for it. Well, you give a brief, something brief. Yeah, okay, so you all seen Predator, right? I mean, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've seen the other ones. If not, hey, go see them all. Uh, but, you know, there's this alien that hunts human beings. Yeah, yeah. And this one actually specifically references both 87 and, what was it, 95 yeah, multiple 87. multiple times. Yeah so, yeah, so this is directly in line with Predator and Predator 2. However, they conveniently... Throughout the film, we yeah, leave off they, any references to Alien vs. Predator or Alien vs. Predator Requiem. So that's, that's kind of smart. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I, in a way, I think they're trying to apologize or at least uh, try to ex exclude, exclude it from the, the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like pretending they didn't exist, probably. Because what, of was the, it made by. Yeah, they're, they're, all owned by, yeah, they're all owned Fox? by 20th Century Fox. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, you know, so getting right into it, uh, the, the opening scene, and I won't spoil anything in the opening scene, but in the opening scene, we kind of get all of the throwbacks to Predator. You know, we've got a, a drug cartel. A hostage situation, military guys, we've got a helicopter in there, we see the Predator camo, we see um, a, a skinned body. So you kind of, within the first like three, four minutes, you kind of have all of the Predator staples. And I, and I like that they get them out of the way because those are the very expected. And even the music, beats. they're using the yes, same music. You get the same music, you get the same Predator. sound effects. Yeah. Uh, and so right off the bat, you get to kind of revisit the universe that we're also familiar with, get that out of the way. It and warms then, you up. Yeah, it warms you up. And then, and then you get into where they can kind of do some deviations and start doing a little bit something different. And uh, this story, one of the main things that they introduce here that wasn't really prevalent in the other films, one, it's a kid, uh, and you've probably seen, seen him in the tra trailer, uh, Jacob Tremblay, I think was the actor's name. Uh, so you've got a, a, a youthful main character, which they haven't done before. And the second thing, I think, was comedy. There's a lot of humor in this film, almost to the point of going too far. Yeah. In some in some moments, and part of that is because of Key, uh, the Key and Peel, the the partnership from uh, what was it from Get Out? And, well, it's uh, also uh, was it written and directed by Shane Black, who is kind yes, of known and, and Fred for Decker, who did Monsters for putting Club. that the humor in there. So, yeah. I didn't know that. See, yeah. this is why. <laughs> but but know? anyway, so yeah, I think and, and here in this film, it's, it's a great addition. I, I really liked all of the humor that they infused. Yeah, it was into good. This. Uh, you, you, you get but a, did you a think sense. they overdid it on the humor? You I think it was like an A-team humor. If you've seen the A-team movie, okay. they're constantly going... There's a lot of bickering back and forth between this corporate... And, but it, it kind of mirrors the original Predator in a way. You had a very distinct group there was of humor. military guys. Well, yeah. And, you know, it, it was more about they all had different, very different personalities. Yeah. You had one guy that was joking all the time. You had the one, you know, the very strong, silent, the Native American guy. You had yeah. the, the, you know, loud loud-spoken uh, Jesse Ventura's character. Uh, yeah, I was a, like that. You had the you government the guy. Yeah. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan was his Dylan. name. 
No, no, Dylan is Dylan is the other guy. Dylan's the the friend of uh, Jesse Ventura. No, Dylan, get to the. All right, no. I'm gonna make <laughs> no, Dylan. What do they got to push it to? I forget the actor's name. He's a CIA Poly guy, and it's, yeah. his, his name is Dylan and Predator. Okay. Sorry, well, you'll, have to, you'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to cut that part out. <laughs> well, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> no that's <laughs> that's <laughs> staying in. Oh, the show. yeah. This is off the cuff, so we, have, we didn't do a. And that's a, why a you guys are going to watch, because. We, you know, it's it's raw. We're not going to edit anything. I told <laughs> him I was going to. inaugural too, thing. But too, I'm so. not going to yeah. edit anything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so. But anyways, in, in this one, the group of characters, they call them the, the loonies. Uh, and it's a group of military guys who have been kind of. They're all Section 8s. Is basically what yeah. they are. They're, they're, they're all, they're they're all early, early in the film. They're actually all being transported to a, a military hospital. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so they're they have all to go through crazy. Yeah. and things. Yeah, so you've, right off the bat, you've got not this really close-knit team of professionals, but a ragtag kind of just this uh, accidental collaboration between people who have never worked together before. And that's why it's funny, because they're all crazy. So, yes, you know, yes. And, they, you know, joke and that's kind of where the humor starts to, to, to be really natural, is when yeah. you've got these crazy people, uh, a lot of them with genuine psychological mm. problems. Uh, and then there's there's the bickering and there's there's actual joke telling. There's mama jokes in this film. Oh yeah, uh, there's which, a lot. Which it's is great. a kind of definitely a deviation from what we saw in Predator and Predator Two. Uh, and it does Predator. remind me of Predator One though, where he's like kept saying all those jokes yes. about his wife. That's actually That's, Shane Black's character yeah. in the, in the film. <laughs> yeah, he plays uh he plays that guy, and he's one of the, the first characters to die. But uh, Shane Shane Black here he is back again as the uh, director and writer. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the guy who so the he's, guy. He's got the hat on. Yeah, that's that's Shane Black. He played a, the one of the characters in Predator. The guy that says, uh, "Oh, or Jesse's like, I don't have time to bleed this Predator one." And he's like, "What do you have time to duck?" That guy. Yes, that guy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's the one who tells the joke at the beginning. He says uh, something about. Uh, I, oh yeah. Uh, my girlfriend has a, a yeah. little, little pussy and something about a. She used to have a big pussy. Yeah, and, yeah. Pussy. yeah. And then Billy's like. And he uh, has to explain the jokes. Yeah. yeah. So that's Shane Black in the original film. Yeah. And so this one, he actually writes and directs. That's really cool. Yeah. So he's been part of this the series since since the beginning. Which so is all these other failures, he was part of. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> no, 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 he was he was part of Predator at least. Well, he so didn't write that one, yeah. did he? Um, if I'm not mistaken, is he the writer of Lethal Weapon? Really? Yeah, he I might. Even. So he wrote yeah. the the. Uh, wrote, I think he wrote and directed the Nice Guys. He did, right? Yeah, yeah. that came out with uh, uh, Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, so yeah. back to this film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, so we got we got a young lead character uh, supporting role really, and then uh, the humor, which I really like. Yeah, the kids definitely support. Yeah, and and in the trailer you can see that there's two predators, so that's not really much of a spoil spoiler. You've got one normal giant predator, one. and then you've got one giant one. Yeah, yeah. and I think. Uh, in, in the early stages in this film, you get this really cool scene, which kind of harkens back to we were talking about the Wolfman. Do you remember in the Wolfman? There's a scene where they, where uh, Benicio del Toro's character is the remake of the Wolfman. Benicio del Toro's character is in a hospital, and he tries to convince everybody to keep him locked down in this hospital, and they don't believe him. And then he transforms into the werewolf and kind of slaughters everybody. There's there's a there's a sort of a similar kind of scene here where the predator is inside of a hospital and it's sedated, but of course things get out of control and it kind of escapes. The, 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 the wonderful thing about this moment, and it's early on in the film, and you actually see clips of it in the trailer as well, so it's not yeah. really a spoiler, uh, is it's a man in a suit. And that, to me, even though some people might complain it's a little bit cheesy, I really like no, the I man in a suit. Yeah, the, yeah. I wanted to, to, to me, it's that. realism. To me, when you see a man in a suit, you, there, there's no there's no camera trickery here. You yeah, actually, it looks real. Really, yeah, you've got a, you've got well, a really cool-looking monster alien thing. So and that's and why I got, I got disappointed, too, though. <laughs> so... The, okay, so there's no spoiler. There's a big alien and a little alien, okay? So the little alien is like Predator. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's in this the suit. one we're familiar with, yeah. The big one is CGI galore. Yep, that's completely and CGI. There, there's a scene in the house, and I swear, it, the movement was so fast, it looked so fake. Yeah. And that bothered me. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's almost... I see where the creators feel like they have to one up their game. They have to step it up. So their I, their next their concept basically is let's make this predator even bigger than the one you guys are used to. But the problem with doing that is now it has to be CG, and so it's almost a step backwards. To but have why them. do they have to do that? They have so much money. Just make it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, early on in the film, we see you know his mandibles and everything on the on the uh, the guy in the suit, and the technology has gotten so good, the makeup's gotten so yeah, good, it, looks, it looks amazing. You know, all of the movements and the mouth and the, and the facial features and the eyes and everything. You, it looks great. And then, of course, we transition later on in the film. You get the the larger predator, and it's just 
one hundred percent percent CG, and and I think as there the years go on too, well, that it's not yeah, yeah. yeah, if anybody's seen uh, sequence, Alien yeah. versus Predator Requiem, which is not a great movie, but in that I film, love it. <laughs> in that film they have the <laughs> Pred Alien, which was a yeah. kind of a cross between a Predator and Alien, and that, that was one, part two. That was, was yeah, Alien versus Predator, yeah. Predator, but but it was also. Uh, if you ever watch the behind the scenes, it, it, it's a guy in a suit. Yeah. But because it's supposed to be larger and everything, you know, the guy's head is here and you, you can sign, kind of see through the neck and then the, you know, the head of the thing yeah. goes above so it. they actually oh, built a larger Yeah, scenes. so they could have theoretically maybe built a larger This one in this film is so enormous. It, yeah, I, I it's almost... Well, what about Alien Restoration? I know we're kind of going off topic, but the one where she, she has the baby, I don't know if you guys seen that, and it's in this... It's like, yeah, you know? that's Alien Resurrection. That's the, actual, the that's queen. not CGI. No, no, that's a giant puppet. So why yeah. can't they do that? Oh. Yeah. Well, it's because about this one, the, yeah, the mobility, they, it, it's fighting things, it's battling, and it's so. jumping from buildings and trees and things, and they're trying uh, to... It's the same problem that uh, the last Aliens movie had, the one Ridley Scott did, um, Covenant. Oh, Covenant, yeah. uh, You know, at, at that point, they're, when the alien's moving around so much, it's all CG, the alien's crawling all over the ship and everything, yeah. and, and it loses the magic, mo- lo- loses that... The monster magic. I and one of the they things, did better in that, I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so the technology has advanced so much that we do get some really impressive shots, even with CG. But I think what will happen is, as the years go on, when you revisit this movie five years from now, and the advancements have gotten even crazier, this one will look deficient. And you'll be able to tell everything that's not real. You know, I and, feel and like reason, it should have looked better. Yeah, maybe. Because I've mean, seen better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. like Avatar and all well, that. Well, sure, you, I mean, you get on, but different oh, companies yeah. How long ago different that? levels of CG. The quality is, is different over different uh, companies. Yeah. yeah. So We still liked it at uh, uh, Fox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Twitter. If you're watching. Yeah, Fox so, executives. So despite, despite those criticisms, I think, I think the film's really well paced. Uh, I don't remember what the runtime is. It's probably a hair under two hours, but it's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty quick. It's nonstop. Once the action starts. A lot, yeah, a lot of action. Um, yeah, it is nonstop. And, and the humor, I think. Either there's great fighting mix. or funny. Yeah, yeah. But it's like constant. There's, there's not a lot of downtime. And um, the, I don't think the kid got too annoying. That's one of my concerns. Mm-hmm. Usually when you have a child actor, sometimes that character can be, you know, this, this over-intelligent, precocious little kid. And then uh, yeah, the kid, it's, it gets great. lines here and there, too. There's something that, I mean, I don't know. Not, well, I won't go there. <laughs> I don't want to give you away any spoilers about it. But I think that the part he played was a great part. But he's playing a certain part as a kid mm. and I think that he it, I don't know it it's a bit stereotypical yeah, yeah but I think that he uh, he should have overacted because he underacted and made him seem normal yeah if that makes any sense you'll know what I'm talking about right? <laughs> so but uh, I still think it was cool the tech was sick yes yeah, so that's, that is that's one new thing element. that they, yeah, they introduced they, a lot of new predator technology which yeah kind of kind of and cool old old stuff that you realize yeah, we get to revisit some of the classic equipment sure yeah. like how how it's used and you know oh that's how they use i didn't know that mm. yeah and there's something real special too but that's a big spoiler but well but it's it's something to look forward to you know yeah. uh, in all of these films every time we get to learn a little bit more about the predator society and the way predators operate and their their modus operandi I almost, and as well as the like technology it goes a little too much it delves too much into how the predators operate though yeah so there's there is some of that you're pulling kind of the curtain frying, back yeah, and trying seeing to, the wizard of oz at his controls you know the, but that's cool though i feel like finally like oh after all the movies yeah there's there's like, some, oh, it's almost there's like they're, they're trying to give an explanation to why they, predators are predators. yeah why yeah and, uh, but, but they're but, giant monsters from outer space let them <laughs> let, let it yeah. remain a mystery I that's think the same it, with, with aliens once you start trying to explain how they came about, how they evolved, and how a you know uh, Michael Fassbender made the alien, then it just ruins it. it uh, oh yeah, 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 I get it. It's kind of the same feel too. Or well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But I still liked it though. I liked that. Yeah, I mean we're, we're obviously uh, it's easy to pick out the faults, but yeah, overall well, it's still let's, a very. Let's talk about well, the not actors. the movie. I'm let's, just let's, talking let's talk about, about the actors. Uh, Olivia Munn has a Badass. major role in yeah, and she's really really Think, effective. Think Psylocke from X Men in this movie. <laughs> Isn't that who she But plays not in? a mutant. <laughs> yeah. Just normal badass. Think Olivia Munn in X Men? Isn't she, she, she play Psylocke? Psylocke? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking a normal Olivia Munn, but she's badass but, in this movie. So my only complaint with that, and she she does great in the in the film, but she introduces herself as a biologist. Yeah, she's And then all a of a sudden she's walking around with machine guns and she's jumping around all over the she's place. She's badder than all the Marines. Yeah, and, military. and it's like, well, wait, Do where was her, where's her military? Yeah, why couldn't yeah. she have been one of the military people? Well, you know what would have been a really brave choice is to make her one of the loony 
ex-soldiers. Because yeah. she made and, her way to and it. Then, and then she could have At been, least it would give a, an explanation as to why all of a sudden she's great with machine guns and, you know, she's... Yeah, why does the woman always have to be the scientist? Can't she be a Marine? Can't she be a, an ex-soldier, right? Well, I mean, that doesn't... Hashtag it, feminism. They, they still, they still make house her... Mom, she was pretty... <laughs> yeah, they still make her a badass, but it's, it's strange that there's no explanation as to why she's a badass. You know what's interesting is even the guys... Well, you know, the guy... One of the main characters, I forgot his name. Uh, Boyd Holbrook? Yeah, he's the tracker in, uh, in Logan. Yeah. He, like, tracks Logan and, and, and X-23. Right. Um, that's basically the main guy. That's Arnold, kind of. But Olivia Munn, I think it was even better ass than him. Yeah, for sure. Super smart. Sure. I think she was more effective because she plays a different type of a role. Boyd Holbrook's character is, is generic. He's just the tough soldier guy. He's also a kind of a good dad, but not really. So, well, yeah, he's a but, killer. But, but you really, you know, he's a terrible dad. Yes, <laughs> as, as for the, yeah. <laughs> he's never home. He's yeah. always killing as, people. As for the character development, Olivia Munn's character is more effective and she's more unique. Boyd Holbrook, every beat he plays, you kind of, you already know his character. From the minute you see him on screen, you know what he, what his character is. So I don't think there's a lot of surprises with, with his role. But uh, you get you get more surprises with uh, Thomas Jane and um, Key, uh, and I forget his name. <laughs> He's got a, a more of a name leading up to Key, but I'll just call him Key. Yeah. Part of Key and Peel. And, uh, yeah, so they're... But he's just typical... Of, he's the same as he always is. Yeah, he's just playing. He's probably the same. But it, but it fits nice it, in this film, because it's, it's great comic relief. Yeah. Also, the, the uh, one of the other crazies is the um, guy from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Um, the guy that... Uh, he's the... If, if you guys watch Game of Thrones, he's one of the cousins, the one that gets his thing cut off. <laughs> yeah, what, and, what is his uh, name? I forgot his name, right? He's like cousin. He's, uh, he's in John Wick as well. He, he plays the, the guy in the first John Wick, the son of the, the main. Oh, the bad main guy. Russian bad yeah. guy that gets, <laughs> kills his dog. Yeah, dude. I, I, mm-hmm. So, but we Olivia should Munn, probably research some of these names. I just want hey, anyway, they know enough. But uh, I tell tough. you what, Olivia Munn, uh, I love her. I've <laughs> always loved her. Uh, not the character, her. her <laughs> well, so. Overall, I thought this movie was pretty effective. I, I will say, so the, the, the climax of the film is is really long and yeah. complex and elaborate, and, and I really like it's that. It's like multiple Yeah, climaxes. Yeah, you, you get kind of, you know, we get this culmination in kind of this epic hunt, which is, again, not really much of a spoiler. You Starts see in the a jungle. Hunt, yeah, and it kind of transitions over a lot of stuff. Yeah, so you get a lot of destruction. That's more a lot of a blood forest. Shit. Yeah. Don't you? But it makes you feel like a jungle. And, of course, the classic Predator music is always in the background. Yep. Makes you feel like you're right back there with all And all the sound effects, too. Yeah. Oh, all, yeah. All of the uh, the computer screens and the Predator uh, Some technology. of the original, the, you know, the original, like, gurgle uh, sound that the Predator makes? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do it. But it's they like, edited it a little. Sound. They changed it a little bit. It was a little bit different, and I liked it. I mean, yeah, I, I, think I it's an prefer update, yeah. when they try and upgrade it or update yeah. or change it a little bit, because... Uh, in AVP Requiem, once again, not a great movie, but they literally copied the exact sounds from all the previous movies. Yeah. And then it then it just feels like too much of a rehash. So. And the and the big one, the big alien, no spoiler, we all know it's there. It's always roaring like a lion. So yeah, yeah. Well, the, it's most. Hey, did you get a little bit of a Terminator feel with that thing though? Yeah, you he, know, I'm gonna be honest about this movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it could be stopped, but it's whatever. <laughs> we you'll know why later. But I, you know what I thought was really interesting that I don't know if you guys picked up or not. I got like a Friday the Thirteenth feel in the in the in the, yeah, the killing the sequences effect, yeah. because the the farther Friday the Thirteenth goes, like you know ten, eleven, twelve, whatever, um, the killing scenes are funnier. I'm not saying these were funny, but you know like when Jason like cuts your arm off and throws you against a tree and you're like stuck there, stuff like that. Those sequences I, I, I thought related. Was, yeah. I had a Friday the Thirteenth feel. Almost like a slasher, mm-hmm. but you know, we all know. But it's not by a the slasher. time you reach this film, you know you've already seen a predator kill people in every manner imaginable. So they're having to constantly come up with new and creative ways to kill people. I agree. People. Yeah. So you know, and they do. They actually come up with a few on. interesting things that maybe you haven't seen before. And the cinematography, I thought, I, I think it was much nicer than. I mean, of course, the technology is getting better. The, the cinematography, you know, since we we just revisited <laughs> Alien vs Predator Re- Re- Requiem recently. Uh, the cinematography here is a huge step up in that film. It's real clean. Yeah, you, you can see everything. And part of that is because of the CG, they don't need to obscure anything because they modeled this this new Super Predator as, as much as they want. You know, as They made it look as good as they that's wanted the it. That's the only thing that's... Yeah. Well, and then the man in the suit early on, I don't think they need to worry about obscuring him because it looks good. The, yeah. the technology has advanced to the point where you know this makeup and prosthetics and, and animatronic face and everything, they don't need to hide it behind a bunch of shadows, which they did in AVP 2. 
And the guy in the suit is Tom Woodruff Jr. again. Yeah, so this, this is the like same the guy fourth in time. All of the... he, yeah, so in Predator, Predator 2, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator 2. So this is the fifth time Tom Woodruff Jr. has been a Predator in the Predator suit. I want to meet him. Have you met him? No, no. He's, he's much older now. And in fact, I, I can't even attest to the fact that he was in the Predator suit. Runner. He was definitely involved in this, this film, but I don't know if he was actually well, he, in the suit. He's usually, he, in the previous ones, he was the Pred Alien. Yeah. And I don't believe he was in the very first Predator, right? Did he start in Predator? Well, that was supposed to be yeah. Van Damme. Right? Yeah. I, say, I say Van Damme. Van Damme. Van Damme. No, it's Van Damme. Yeah, yeah. Jean-Claude. Here in America, I'm older than you. say Van Damme. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> but we were talking about that earlier, but, uh, I, you know, I really like the tech. I think that was part, probably my favorite part, because you get to see in detail the helmet, the the arm pieces, that all the little things, the devices. You get to learn more about them than you would, I think, in any other any other Predator movie. Yeah, we get to see them in action a lot. Yeah, like yeah, what is... they do and what what exactly you know, see all the things and how they become. Well, invisible. I mean, that's part of the fun of it too. Is that a spoiler? It... <laughs> how they camo? Well. That's well, you know, that's, that's a, a trademark of the Predator, is it's, it's camo But we never yeah. knew how they... We, right, right, yeah, so we get to see a little bit, tech, little bit right? more of yeah, how it that like it's maybe uh, a different tech. changed a bit. But it's cool. Yeah. We won't tell you. I, I will say, though, that as much fun as the first three quarters of this film is, I think the clincher at the end uh, kind of brings things down a bit. And obviously we won't talk about what happens in, in the conclusion, but... It, it to me it, it kind of it, you took this wild roller coaster ride and you start you kind of end on this note that um, are you talking about the last minute yes the, the last the secret the final the final sequence yeah uh, it's, it's like spoilers. they're trying to turn it into a well, Marvel they're, well, franchise well they're trying well they're, they're obviously I was with so many of these properties they're trying to leave it just open ended enough that there's more room for more, conclusion more. yeah there's now, room did, for for further episodes Disney yeah. buy this I know they bought Fox did that include Aliens. And oh, I don't know. That's a good, good question. Yeah, because it's possible, I it felt like a Disney ending, even though that hasn't happened yet. Like, <laughs> but this day and age, Hollywood's all about the money, so you they won't let you end a movie on such a conclusion that you can't have. Sequels. Yeah, there's there's no it's specific. And especially finality. this, I'm sure they're hoping to turn it into a franchise. But that's what the difference is from all the others, except for AVP. They all if they, in the end of those. There's we, always a tease. We'll never see an Alien 3 again where they just kill everybody and end it. I mean, that's, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but the, for all the other Predators at the end, it's over. The battle's won, and it's over every Predator I've seen, yeah. except for AVP. And this Predator, there's something at the end. And that makes me feel like franchise. Yeah. yeah. A whole other and, and I, it's I hope so. It's they hope secret. that, it's, yeah, it's yeah, they they hope that it, it's, this does well enough yeah. in the box office. Everybody wants to do trilogy nowadays. nowadays. So it's a start over then. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely for sure. A it, it's yeah. it serves as a continuation in the chronology of the films, but it's definitely reintroducing this, this to new audiences. This is essentially Predator Three, is what it is. Here's what I get confused well, Predator about: Predator Four, because Predators, Predators, yeah. it's it's kind of Predator they, they don't even no. mention Predators yeah, at all. I guess really. if that takes place in another. No, but if Predators, completed. everything they say, all the lines in Predators are stolen from Predator One. Yeah, Predators was technically a remake of Predator. Yeah, it, well, it so. felt that way anyway. Yeah. Oh, and then, in, in their attempts to, to do an homage to things that occurred in the 1987 film, you actually got something of a pseudo remake. Yeah, but this I this is like a, this is a jump start. This they're definitely trying to go in a new direction. They're trying to do, let's do a whole series of these. If this is successful, no, it will. I mean, even if it, even if I mean, they didn't spend that much on CGI, <laughs> so I'm sure they'll make money. But uh, well, I don't <laughs> sorry, know. But this is probably two hundred million dollar film. I probably, hope you know. not. it's it's probably not. <laughs> I bet not because most of the sequences are in like a town and. I, I don't think they. I think if they were real, if they had like this was their huge flagship thing, it would be earlier in the year or maybe October, right? Because it, it, it is like Halloween a, themed. Uh, oh this, yeah, this they is set to, during Halloween. Yeah, yeah, so you do get to see some Halloween. But the fun. film comes out the fourteenth, September fourteenth. Is that what it is? At the end of this week. Yeah. 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 So it's it's kind of too early for Halloween. You miss that crowd, maybe. I will say, um, I'm going to give one spoiler. Are you ready? So <laughs> brace yourselves. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be. Earmuffs. There is a get to the Chavas. Okay? <laughs> well, I'm spoiling that. It's, but they do it right. They do it right. It's funny. It's terrible when they do it in Requiem. And just crazy. <laughs> the, yeah. the, I actually wish they didn't do it in this because we're all expecting it. And <laughs> our, yeah, I, but it, that was a good timing. It was. It's different. But uh, yeah, it's no. It it, it, it's, it works here much better than yeah. But it didn't have to be in this. Film. No. There's but, there's already so much comic relief. 
that there's a there's a levity that, that's pervasive to. in this film. They and, always have to throw it in, man. Every that's time. That's a staple of every Predator movie. Yeah, just like Sigourney Weaver. But the know, funny thing is that you know, the funny the, thing is that when a Schwarzenegger says it in the first film, it's not meant to be a joke. It's not even yeah. meant to be like a, a catchphrase. But it. Oh, I don't <laughs> know about it's that. It's because of his accent, people start making fun of the guy, and then and but now we have this immortalized it. phrase that's I mean, I comedic. Multiple friends I have that are uh, love Arnold, and I mean. We're on the phone. We start talking like Arnold. I, it's, I'm forty some years old now, and I, it's been twenty years of that, so I don't know. But uh, well, that's good. Good way to wrap it up, right? <laughs> yeah, get to the top. Get to the theater. We can do all our Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions. And <laughs> uh, um, oh well, before we wrap it up, so we are wrapping up then. Yeah, I think so. Um, again, at the beginning of the video, I put the uh, their site. Uh, they have tons of movie reviews and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys wanted to say anything about well, our Well, so. our review for Predator will go live later tonight. So yeah, probably. well, I'm not going to post it till after their review's oh. up anyway. It'll be after midnight. Because part of the giveaway has to do with that. So tomorrow morning it'll be up. So basically what I want to do is you're gonna get, whoever wins is getting both of these. Now, I did a NECA review on Jason, and that thing's up to like 700 views. Or it's almost 800, which is ridiculous. So I think NECA is the key here besides Predator. So the deal is this. Go to their site. Check out their review, comment, because there's a little section you can read it, see how they, their style, it's really good. Comment what you think, and then put your YouTube name, whatever that is, um, that you're, that you are watching this on, at the end of it. So we know that you did that. On my video, subscribe, like, and turn your notifications on so that you can find out who wins, and just tell me that you shared with them, and that will be it. Or you can share with your friends, something like that. So we get a little bit of a mix here. Um, and I'm saying at 500 views, I'm going to pick a winner. Actually, we'll all pick. I think we'll probably, I'll bring a little raffle thing or something and they could have them pick. It'll um, be impartial, right? But yeah. Am I allowed to enter this contest? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could share my video on YouTube. They have to make a YouTube show. But uh, this this is really sick, okay? And these aren't easy to find with the the, the blood on them. These are pretty hard to find. So whoever wins gets that. So I appreciate you guys watching. I had a lot of time. Thank and you thanks, for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for, uh, Thank for and, sharing uh, this with us. And, uh, these are the Massey twins, and they're awesome. And I'm me. And yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can do kind this. kind of awesome. Modesty. I, if this does well, awesome. then maybe I'll do a... No, we're not going to do spoilers. But, you know, I might be able to see Captain Marvel early. All these other movies early, so help me out. Comment on their <laughs> stuff so I can go see them early and we can give me more free stuff, okay? So thanks for watching. See you next time. God, I hope it was recording. <laughs> <laughs>